Climacophobia, the fear of climbing stairs. It's surprising there's a term for it, but if you have chronic hip pain, it's easy to relate to. But you shouldn't have to. At the Cedar sinai Orthopedic Center, our minimally invasive techniques allow many patients to go back home within 24 hours and get back to everyday tasks, like walking up the stairs. More reasons to trust the number one hospital in L.A. for joint replacements. Call 1-800-CEDARS-1 or visit our website. Welcome to the Elite Podcast Network, your number one source for all things sports. Follow us on Twitter, at Elite Podcast Net. Use the hashtag EPN era and join the revolution now. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Wrestling Heads Radio. Thank you for joining us again. Of course, I am Tom, I'm joined here by Skits, and joining us from Weekly Wrestling Podcast, the godfather of the Elite Podcast Network, Mr. Matthew Grant. Gentlemen, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. I'm chilling. I would be better if Skype would decide to actually cooperate with us, but, you know, it wants to be a cocksucker tonight, so it is what it is. And that's what we do, ladies and gentlemen. We shoot on blog talk radio when it fucks up. We shoot on Skype when it fucks up because we're just, we're, I guess we're getting buried. I guess that's that's what happens when we try and podcast. But anyways, lots going on in professional wrestling And one of the big announcements from this week in independent wrestling, Kenny Omega will be returning to Ring of Honor at the 14th anniversary show, obviously making his much anticipated and well overdue return to Ring of Honor and their much anticipated 14th anniversary event. Um, Skits, what did you think of the announcement of Kenny Omega coming back to Ring of Honor? What were your thoughts? I mean, me, myself, I was pretty damn excited because, you know, me, myself, Oscar, we're going to uh, be going. So I was like, fuck yeah, you know, Kenny Omega, somebody else in New Japan that's going to get me excited. Besides the ones that are always you know, booked at a uh, ROH New Japan show. Because, you know, you always get the Okadas, the Tanahashis, the Kushidas, you know. Now this year we're getting something a little different, you know. When it comes to in uh, Ring of Honor, New Japan show, you're getting Ishii, you know, you're getting Goto, you know, you're also getting Kenny Omega now, which is which is rare, you know. So it's something different, and I'm hoping they add maybe one more guy from New Japan, and I'll be fine at that. Yeah, I find yeah. it I find it very interesting that they're bringing Kenny Omega in. Uh, there's no secret that he left Ring of Honor on a bit of a sour note, and good to see him back with the promotion. Uh, my only worry is to have him in like a six man tag match where he's not utilized to his full potential in Ring of Honor. Uh, you know, the Elite is a great thing. Him and the Bucks are a great trios team, but at the same time, I think a lot of people want to see Kenny Omega in a singles light. So hopefully, that's something that's looked at. Yeah, yeah, just like we were I, talking I, about I, earlier. Go ahead. Just like we were talking about earlier, most likely it's going to be the whole elite thing. That um, that that team is probably going to be like that team of the weekend. But, oh yeah, I think so too. And you know, for me personally, it's great to see Kenny Omega back in Ring of Honor. First of all, because he was not given first of all the chance in Ring of Honor he should have. Um, mainly due to one Jim Cornette who, you know, said he saw nothing in Kenny Omega, which that's another thing you can uh, mark off the list of things that Jim Cornette was wrong about and why Ring of Honor was 
where it was at the time and look at where it is at now without Jim Cornette. Just had to get that out there. But um, like I said, it's great to see Kenny we make earlier. I know we were talking earlier, and Max said he predicted for, you know, have uh, the Bucks and Kenny Omega against ACH, Alex Shelley, and um, and um, Matt Seidel. Makes perfect sense. I'm going to tell you why. It makes perfect sense. Number one, uh, ACH and Kenny Omega both are into video games. So that's so with them two in the ring at the same time, it's going to be pure comedy, at, you know, at the same time. And plus, you already know Alex Shelley wrestles in New Japan, and of course, you know you got Matt Seidel who wrestles in New, in a uh, in a uh, New Japan. So you know it's definitely like written on the wall right there. Matt makes perfect sense. I, I wouldn't be too surprised if that went down, just because of like they've been pushing the Shelley, ACH, and Seidel team as a trios team for the past little while. Plus. Uh, I mean, the only thing that would surprise me about this is maybe, or sorry, that wouldn't surprise me about this is maybe putting Shelly in a singles match with uh, the whole Daniel situation and the KRD thing. Maybe have Shelly and Saban go at it. I don't know what you want to do there, but I think maybe Shelly not being involved wouldn't be too much of a surprise to me, but I expect ACH and Seidel to be a part of this for sure. I feel like you can still do that on a TV tapings too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I think, but why I think Matt's right is because a lot with Ring of Honor, what they do for kind of their bigger pay-per-view shows and kind of their bigger shows throughout the areas, you know, there's going to be one match in there, whether it's a single match or a multi-man tag match, you're going to have the spot fest match. You're going to have the match that's going to have, it's going to be fast paced. It's going to have all the spots in it that you know, people in the crowd and people watching are going to pop for easy. So this will this will definitely be the match. You know, you have six guys who are, um, you know, high flyers uh, going at it. So it, it, it makes perfect sense to have this match be kind of like the showcase uh, kind of high flying spot fest type of matchup. And which... you say spot fest match nine times out of the ten that usually involves the Young Bucks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's funny because I say, you know, multi-man tag matches and usually, like you said, nine times out of ten in Ring of Honor, the Young Bucks are involved in it, whether it's just a regular tag team match or uh, a triple threat tag team match. The Young Bucks somehow find themselves in the spot fest match, which, you know, at this point isn't isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's it's, you know, just another aspect of what uh, Ring of Honor is going for, especially when you look at the main event, when it's going to be Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Jay Lethal going at it for the world title in a triple threat match, that's going to be a lot more technical. It's going to be, um, I think, a lot slower paced. So you're going to want to have one match on the card that, um, if there's any new fans watching, uh, kind of something to to get them excited for and showcase a lot of... Uh, a lot of the, like I said, the faster paced stuff that Ring of Honor is known for. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. And like I said, Ring of Honor, I think they've done a really good job bringing in uh, the New Japan guys for this 14th anniversary show. You know, you got Okada, you have um, Tanahashi, you have Kushida, Hiroki Goto, Tomohiro Ishii, and now Kenny Omega. Um, pretty good. And also considering, like I said, they lost. AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura, two pretty big names that would have uh, drawn in a lot of people. And, you know, when those names got dropped off of the card, a lot of people were disappointed. A lot of people disappointed that it, that uh, Nakamura wasn't going to be showing up. So hopefully this uh, this will definitely make up for, for that occurring. So, um, you know, Ring of Honor trying to do the best with a bad situation. And to kind of give some news, actually, apparently Dave Meltzer said on the show that um, Kenny Omega will be a semi-regular in Ring of Honor going forward as AJ Styles was in the company when he was around. So just to kind of shed some light on Kenny Omega's status with Ring of Honor, he's not going to be there just for a one-off, apparently. Nice. Would you, you... Would, you guys, would you guys be interested in a Jay Lethal-Kenny Omega match for the Ring of Honor world title? 
Uh, yeah, but not right now. Because I feel like Kyle Riley and Adam Cole, those guys deserve more uh, shine for the title at the time right now. Because, you know, we already know Kenny Omega is not going to be at ROH like on a regular basis like that. He'll show up, you know, every now and then. So I would say you got to keep Cole and Kyle Riley around that title. And they need to start building more contenders besides um, besides Kyle Riley and uh, Adam Cole after uh, they're done with ROH 14. Yeah, so lots going down for Ring of Honor. Obviously, 14th anniversary slowly, slowly coming to us. It's going to be live. Uh, February 26th, and then the TV taping going down February 27th. They do have a TV taping coming up this weekend in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, the Winter Warriors Tour coming uh, to a close, and some of the matches going down. We have the Briscoes going against Alex Shelley and ACH, uh, Dalton Castle going against Christopher Daniels, Adam Cole versus Matt Seidel, and uh, Silas Young and the Beer City Bruiser going against Dalton Castle's boys. Dalton Castle's boys getting uh, getting a showcase match. What do you, what do you guys think about that one? Go ahead, Matt. Okay, Matt's not there. Um, well, talking about the match with Dalton Castle and Christopher Daniels. No, the match, uh, Dalton Castle's boys going against Silas Young and the Beer City Bruiser. So Dalton Castle's boys getting that's, a matchup. That's what I thought I heard. I wasn't too sure. And welcome to Skype. You know, your mic gets muted and you can't unmute it for like another 40 seconds until it decides to unfreeze. But anyways, uh, the boys versus Silas Young and the Bruiser. Um, I mean, it, it is what it is. I, I guess this feud just drags on and drags on and drags on and never has no end. I want to say this: the boys, they actually uh, are Ring of Honor training. They like train out of the Ring of Honor dojo, so it was uh, bound to happen soon where these guys get uh, you know, some uh, ring time at, in an actual match. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what I, happens with that. I guess they're good Go kids, man. I have no complaints about it. It's just like. You know, I just want this feud to end, man. Like, well, how long does Dalton Castle versus Silas Young have to go on for? You got the point across. The boys left Dalton Castle. They went back to Dalton Castle. What else of a story needs to be told? Um, I agree. I definitely agree with uh, with Matt saying she needs to end now. It's been going on a little too long. Yeah, and I think at this point, a lot of people are going to become disinterested in you know, in, in, in this feud altogether. I think it's probably reached that point already. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll see this weekend is maybe the last of it. And hopefully uh, come March, we'd start fresh with Dalton Castle and his boys. All I got to uh, say, the... man, is how low Silas Young has dropped since his whole feud with Kevin Steen. Yeah, I know he had injured just after the feud and, you know, it wasn't a chance to capitalize on the momentum. But, man, he has turned into such a fucking low carder. He should be so much higher than he is on the card and he is. And, and it sucks so hard. He's so good. Oh, I agree. I agree. And it's funny because one of the things when Silas Young was coming back from injury, I was like, man, they're really going to start pushing this guy. They're really going to make him seem like a threat, especially after, like you just said, uh, him feuding with Kevin Steen and what that did for his career. And unfortunately, you know, injuries in wrestling seem to come at the, the worst opportune time. And it really seemed to kind of derail any momentum that the guy had and maybe any momentum he had with, interest in him as far as the fans go so who knows though i think it's easy to hopefully pick back momentum up for silas young um you know tagging with the beer city bruiser isn't going to really help too much but um we'll see we'll see what happens there's also seven tag team gauntlet for a future shot at the ring of honor world tag team titles you got the young bucks red dragon rapongi vice 
and other teams going at it. So that should be interesting. And of course, the top prospect tournament semifinals and finals are going to be going down this weekend in Nashville, Tennessee. So if you're in the Nashville area, definitely check that out going down this weekend. Also, the women of honor are going to be there. ODB, uh, Veda Scott, Taylor Hendricks, Amber Gallows, Mandy Leon, uh, Kelly Klein, all the women of honor are going to be there. So uh, that's going to be the last stop for Ring of Honor before the 14th anniversary. I, I got to ask, is Cedric Alexander booked on the card? Because if not, we want to talk about people who have dropped in Ring of Honor. Holy fuck, man. This guy goes from being one of the top uh you know mid card guys upper mid card guys to being just off a lot of events with this little know, suspension given last time I seen him was uh at the last pay per view yeah so that's what i'm like, saying man like he hasn't been used since they're doing this whole fucking lawyer angle with him and beta scott and it's just going horribly and they're using cedric in a terrible way it's just like why do you got to go to the stereotypical route of doing that whole thing and you know why can't you just use Cedric for Cedric? Why can't you just use the talent that is in Cedric Alexander instead of putting that to waste, instead of doing some stupid storyline that you think is going to get him over, that's just going to ruin him completely. I'm, man. Every like, since on Moose, he, he hasn't really been used. Yeah, ever yeah. since that feud with Moose, and it just it went nowhere for him. He got the win, but what did he do after? Absolutely fuck all. Not a damn thing. Yeah. And both of those guys are scheduled to appear, um, as well as Jay Lethal, Roderick Strong, War Machine, The All Night Express, uh, Kazarian, uh, BJ Whitmer, Adam Page, Will Ferrara, Cheeseburger. They, they're all signed to appear, but uh, no matchups announced for and them on that, the Ring of Honor see, website. This is my thing with Ring of Honor. I think people will get a lot more excited for the live events and whatever the case may be if they announce more matches. It's even the case with the 14th anniversary. They've announced, what, four matches? That doesn't fill a pay-per-view. If you announce a card in ahead of time, I think a lot of people would be more excited. you get better ticket sales. I think all around you'd have a better show. But instead, it seems like Ring of Honor's un- unorganized when it comes to this kind of shit. They kind of announce who's going to appear. And besides that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, because I can agree with Matt because tickets are still available for that TV tape in, in Vegas. Uh, but the pay-per-view is sold out. So I know a lot of friends are trying to go out there. I'm like, if you want to go, TV tape is still available. So... And that makes perfect sense. You know, we know New Japan guys are there, but we don't know who they're facing. Like, people don't want to waste their money on seeing fucking Okada go against fucking Cheeseburger. I'm just Okada's working moves, it. but I, I get what you're trying to say. Like, no, I'm 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 talking about the I'm talking about the, the uh, TV. Oh, okay. I, I get what you're trying to say. Basically, just we want to see what the matches are. Like, we don't want to sit here being in the dark until the day of and be like, oh fuck, I wasted my money because. I've been in that position before where I've gone to a show and I, you know, you expect the best and you can get the worst. Uh, it's sometimes a waste of money. So it's like if they announce this stuff ahead of time, you'll get better ticket sales. You'll get, you know, more hype towards the show as well. How are people supposed to hype up the show when they don't even know what they're doing? Yeah. And especially, of- especially for new fans. Imagine if you're if you're a new fan and you happen to catch uh, Ring of Honor through Twitter or you catch it through Sinclair Broadcasting, and you're a brand new fan, and you don't know much about the product, and you're looking to to go to a live event to you know to check it out, and there's no matches. What incentive do you have to go? You you want to know what's going to be there, so you know what to expect. And I mean, you don't know what's going to happen in the ring, but you have an idea of what's going on as you're going to the show. You don't want to be left you know, completely clueless, that'd be like, you know, going to a sporting event and the team, you know, doesn't announce a lineup. They say, oh, well, these players might play. That's not how you do it. Right. So I want to, um, I know we're in the Ring of Honor. I I want to talk about something a little positive. I know we were talking about the the, uh, show that, most of the uh, Ring of Honor guys are going to uh, New Japan, where we were talking earlier uh, off air about Adam Cole, Jay Lethal, Roddy Strong, guys like that headed over. Uh, Moose, Dalton Castle. Uh, I think that's a big deal for some of those names that I just dropped, you know, because 
a, a guy like a like a Dalton Castle who's actually making his debut at PWG next week. Um, and now he's going to be making his debut in New Japan later on this year. It's uh, Mon Blanc. I mean, excuse me, mind blowing. Yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to be really interesting. You know, um, you look at some of the names like Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish who have gotten over uh, really well in New Japan ever since they came onto the scene as a tag team. Um, especially Kyle O'Reilly, too. Uh, I mean, you, you also mentioned Bobby Fish, but really Kyle O'Reilly shining in the best of the Super Juniors last year, making it all the way to the finals and then having that uh, fantastic matchup with Kushida in the final matchup. Um, and, of course, you go to Michael Elgin, who debuted at the G1 Climax last year and really quickly got over with the New Japan fans so quickly because of his, a lot of his power moves and his strength and um, really rejuvenating Michael Elgin a lot. So it's going to be really interesting. I think Don Castle is going to bring a lot of energy to the New Japan fans. I think they're really going to appreciate uh, kind of the theatric aspect that Don Castle brings when uh, whatever promotion he's at. Adam Cole, same thing. Like I said, his charisma is off the charts. And I think the New Japan fans are really going to respond to that. And But you look at the other side, you look at a guy like Roderick Strong, who maybe doesn't rely on his charisma so much, but relies on what he does in the ring, kind of like Michael Elgin. And I think the New Japan fans are really going to enjoy seeing uh, a lot of Roddy's moves. I think they're going to pop for a lot of Roddy's big moves that we see um, in whatever promotion, whatever matchup you see Roderick Strong in. I think they're going to love that. And it's uh, it's especially important that it's this is going to be in uh, Cork and Hall. Most uh, Cork and Hall crowds are pretty uh, pretty loud, so I'm hoping for these two shows that they're loud for these uh, Ring of Honor guys and they give them a chance. So it's going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, right. He's got to work with a guy like uh, Naito or somebody like like uh, like that for sure. Uh, as we're moving on, I'm sure you're going to move on with the topic, but just before we get to that, obviously with it being Wednesday with us being recording, it's a Lucha Underground day and there's been some interesting rumors been put out by, uh, Dave Meltzer about Lucha Underground and WrestleMania weekend. Uh, Lucha Underground apparently had some talks with TNA about doing a cross brand show WrestleMania weekend to which Lucha Underground was kind of sour about it. And apparently... There was talks between Lucha Underground and WWE in doing a cross-brand show for WrestleMania weekend. Your guys' thoughts on this? I kind of mentioned that they were doing something WrestleMania weekend to you, but I didn't know nothing about this until now. Um, I think Lucha needs to do their own thing. They don't need to cross-brand with nobody because they got something on fire right now. Um, So if I was... Lucha Underground, I would try to get our own selves over by ourselves and have our own show that um, for the the WrestleMania weekend. Yeah, I gotta I gotta really agree with that. You know, if it if it was a promotion like Evolve, where there we know there's a relationship between Evolve and WWE, it would make more sense for Evolve to do some kind of cross brand promotion or cross brand show with wwe more importantly probably nxt because that's really what we're seeing is the talent trading between the two uh promotions but lucha underground i i I wouldn't really understand it because it's it's like they're their own entity and they need to just kind of stay that way they don't need to you know maybe once a year maybe just kind of hook up with another show if if there was ever a promotion I would say Lucha Underground needs to um, cross-brand with, it would be Chikara for the reason that both Chikara and Lucha Underground are kind of that cartoony, um, more TV and drama-based promotions. And they're kind of at the top tier as far as that goes. You know, they're heavily involved in characters and um, stories and You know, a lot of it's based off of comics or movies and things like that. So if I was ever to see a promotion cross-brand with Lucha Underground, I would pick Chikara because I think it would work well between the two promotions as far as 
bringing it, you know, through the camera onto the screen, I think would work. Uh, I would I would say the best out of anything else. I don't mean to put over promotions working with Chikara or anything, but Smash Wrestling just announced a cross promotion with Chikara. That's going to be awesome. But yeah, I totally see where you're coming from. Chikara and Lucha Underground would probably be the best uh, combination, if anything. But I, I, I'm I'm with you guys, man. Lucha Underground's its own entity. It doesn't need to cross promote with anybody. It does its own thing, and they're doing well. So. You know, no complaints for me whatsoever. It's just a very interesting thought that they were in talks with WWE and, and TNA on that fact. But is Dave Musher, is he right on this, or is he is, or is he speculating? Um, I think that was, like, kind of confirmed. From what I heard, Vince wasn't at the meetings with Lucha Underground and WWE, but Triple H was. Is that why? So now I get it. That's why somebody um somebody added uh Triple H uh, uh there was like there was like has somebody been in Boyle Heights and then it was like at Triple H. Hey man, Lucha Underground or sorry, Ricochet has been talking about NXT quite a bit and he actually went on record and put a tweet out saying can Ricochet be in NXT and could Prince Puma stay in Lucha Underground? So I'm just saying. Ricochet let's not forget. He is roommates with with Apollo Cruz and Rich Swan, so yep, it's possible. It's definitely possible. I could just imagine Triple H trying to pitch working with Lucha Underground to Vince, and Vince is just like, "Wait a minute, why why is Kalisto underground? Get him get him above ground, damn it! Come on, what are we doing?" Ah, but um. I don't know. Like I said, I, I I know there were rumors also going around, you know, and it was basically confirmed by Lucha Underground, you know, people that work there, that WWE was basically trying to, I don't want to say raid their uh, roster, but they really were trying to scoop up everybody from Lucha Underground's roster, you know, and Helico and Jack Evans confirmed that they... Uh, were con- uh, confronted by WWE to get some contracts, and they denied it. Of course, uh, Ricochet probably is in WWE's interest as well, as well as some other guys. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Johnny Mundo gets a gets a couple calls from WWE or two. So you you have to keep in mind a, that a lot of these guys now in WWE are from the independent scene. They're probably pitching for their friends to come to the WWE to join them. Like look at guys like Apollo Cruz and whatnot. I'm sure he had a part in Rich Swan getting signed. I'm sure he had a part in Biff Busick getting signed. I'm sure, you know, everybody's pitching for everybody in the WWE. So that's why you're probably seeing a lot of these signings. You know, I'm sure guys like Finn Balor and Kevin Owens and um, you know, other guys pitch for AJ Styles to get signed, to which AJ Styles pitch for Nakamura to get signed. You know, it's it's an all around circle. You know people in professional wrestling at the end of the day. There's uh, you know, that the the word of mouth is an insane thing. Just like Finn pitched for Bullet Club to get signed. Yeah, it's it's an all around circle, man. And I, I know we were kinda of talking gonna about up, everybody's gonna end up in the East soon, bro. All right, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever. Uh, they're they're slowly but surely taking over the entire independent scene, taking all the talent away from us, and that opens up spots, man. So at the end of the day, is it really taking the independent scene from us, or is it just making it a little bit better? But we were talking about Ring of Honor, and we're talking about the Women of Honor. I just actually looked; they had four matches set for this weekend shows, and actually, I just noticed that Allison K, Thunder Kitty, Crazy Mary Dops, and some of the uh, ladies getting an opportunity with Ring of Honor this weekend. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm hoping uh, they have uh, a Women of Honor match uh, that weekend at um, at uh, ROH 14, and you know they just throw that on YouTube. That'd be cool. I think they should. I, I I don't know why they haven't announced some sort of Women of Honor match for the 14th anniversary. You know, if you're really going to be pushing this uh, Women of Honor stuff, you really got to stick by it. You can't be kind of flip-flop when it comes to Women of Honor. You can't only book it on some shows. 
and then not book it on another. And then when it comes to your big shows, not even book it at all. If you're going to take this seriously and you want the fans to take it seriously, you need to put it on every show. You need to start uh, having put some main stay pe- You need to start having some mainstay people in the Women of Honor division besides ODB. Yeah, and Taylor Hendricks as well as somebody who's kind of a mainstay, but she's mixture between a valet and a wrestler. So you really need those people that are like the full out wrestling in the Women of Honor division. Even ODB is not a, a, around as much as she should be. I know Mandy Leon's been kind of getting her shots here and there as well, but she's another chick that, you know, isn't necessarily a full time wrestler. She does a lot of backstage work for Ring of Honor. So they really need to either start or go on this whole women of honor division instead of pulling the trigger and you know then stopping and then pulling the trigger again and stopping it seems like they're stop and go on this whole situation definitely but yeah i know obviously we were talking the ring of honor new japan crossover happening at the 14th anniversary and of course new japan Coming up uh, February 11th and February 14th, you have two big shows, uh, the new beginning in uh, Osaka and the new beginning in Nagata. And uh, really quick, let's uh, let's go over some of the matches happening. Uh, First, before you go over the the matches, I just want to say one thing. Oscar could have made the fucking show. You want to like shit on YouTube like people can't see on fucking Twitter. Come on, bro. All right, continue. (laughs) <laughs> uh somebody somebody's pulling a uh a uh, a no show or maybe a kevin nash or scott hall whatever you want to put it as but anyway wait somebody broke their quad or tore their quad no that's a triple h oh i thought that was a vince mcmahon fuck you get these all mixed no, up all the time no, a vince mcmahon is when you tear both quads that's that's a very rare thing to happen <laughs> oh my jesus but yeah, new beginning in Osaka happening uh, February 11th live on the uh, live on New Japan World, which should mention uh, February 19th and February 20th are the dates for the honor rising, the New Japan and Ring of Honor shows happening in Cork and Hall. Those will be live on New Japan World as well. But this going down February 11th, uh, really quick go over some of the undercard matches before we get to some of the big matches. Uh, David Finley versus Jay White is happening. Two of the young Lions uh, going at it. You said, especially you said, with... you said David Finley versus Jay White? Yep. Oh, man. A lot of people don't know too too much about David um, Finley and Jay White. Uh, I'm Honestly, I think those two should be a tag team um, on a regular basis and start getting, you know, some time. Uh, as a team on shows instead of these small shows because they are going to be one of those junior tag teams that's going to be taken over soon once, uh, you know, you have teams like the Bucks and Red Dragon not booked or whatnot. But, um, yeah, that's going to be a pretty good match with those two, two talented young dudes. Yeah, and especially with uh, Yohei Kamatsu and Sho Tanaka leaving New Japan uh, for their international excursion, probably going uh, to Mexico for a little bit, possibly maybe coming here to the United States and Canada. Who knows? But they're going to be gone for a while. So uh, David Finley and Jay White are two of the young lines, definitely uh going to get some shine in new japan and i'm excited i'm excited just like you said i'm excited for this matchup i don't know if they should be tag teaming or not i kind of like them as singles guys it helps them uh stand out a little bit more in my opinion but uh the new japan fans really seem to be uh into these guys so you know let them go at it let them go at it at the show and it should be a good way to start off the show so we got a couple of uh, six-man tags going down. First, we have uh, representing Chaos. We have Ghetto, uh, Sakuraba, and Yoshihashi taking on Jushin Thunder Liger, Ryusuke Taguchi, and Tiger Mask. Just your typical New Japan undercard six-man tag. And then, one of the, a little bit more interesting, 
we have uh, representing Los Ingobernables de Japan. You have, of course, Tetsuya Nado, Bushi, and Evil taking on Juice, Juice Robinson, formerly known as CJ Parker, Kushida, and Michael Elgin. And then a uh, rematch from Wrestle Kingdom 10. The never open weight six man tag team titles are on the line. The Versco brothers and Toriano taking on the Bullet Club of Bad Luck Fale, Tamatanga, and Yujihiro Takahashi. So some six man tags going down. And speaking of rematches, there's a lot of them going down on this show. You have the Young Bucks going against Matt Seidel and Ricochet going against Red Dragon. Three-way tag team match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles. Um, basically a rematch from Wrestle Kingdom 10, except for Rapongi Vice not being uh, included in this matchup. And the, one of the matches we were talking about, Skits, that we're really excited for, uh, never open weight title on the line, uh, Katsuyori Shibata going against Tomohiro Ishii. And we know how good their match was at Wrestle Kingdom 10. And I know oh. you were very curious as to know if, this would live up to the Wrestle Kingdom 10 matchup. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I'm, even if these dudes don't top their Wrestle Kingdom match, I know they're going to go out there and put 100%, 110% in this damn match. Like, these two are like straight hard workers when it comes to New Japan for wrestling. Two of the best in the world, hands down. Oh, yeah. No doubt in my mind. I know they're going to go out there and whether or not it lives up to the Wrestle Kingdom 10 matchup, whether it's better, whether it's the same, whether it's worse, it's still going to be a hard hitting, strong style matchup, which is really becoming uh, what the never open weight title is about. So hopefully they don't uh, headbutt each other to death like they did at Wrestle Kingdom 10 because that was some brutal stuff. So finishing out the card for the new beginning in Osaka, you have a six-man tag going on. The Bullet Club of Doc Ellis, Carl Anderson, and Kenny Omega going against Togi Makabe and Tomoaki Anma, uh, GBH, and uh, Tanahashi as well. So setting up kind of a matchup for the next night, two different matchups. But main event for the new beginning in Osaka is going to be Hiroki Goto going against the IWGP heavyweight champion, Kazuchika Okada. Um, obviously, Goto has been getting a lot of heat in New Japan uh, ever since, you know, it was announced that he's going to be facing Okada and then attacking him at the press conference. So Goto has been getting a lot of booze so far and uh, definitely playing like the that. heel role. I kind of like it. I'm going to be real. I like that shit. You need to have uh, somebody that's evil, you know, that's coming after that title. Because I don't think we have a top villain in New Japan right now. Because, like, you know, the Bullet Club is basically dying slowly. It's just going to be three guys. And that's Kenny Omega uh, and the Bucks. And let's not forget, Kenny Omega is in a whole different division when it comes to the title. So I think we need a top, another top hill uh, in New Japan. Besides, uh, the top two that we have right now, is hands down, would be Kenny Omega, the Bucks, and NATO and Evil. Like, I would think those are the top hills right now. I think we need yeah. a little bit more hills. Because I feel like in New Japan, everybody's a face. Yeah, the, the heel-face dynamic in New Japan is definitely, it's a lot different than what we see here in North America. It's definitely a lot more split. Uh, you, don't, you don't really get a clear cut. Uh, heel and baby face dynamic going on but uh, when there is heels and baby faces I think they do it well like I said NATO is doing a great job as a heel ever since uh, joining Los Ingrenables it's been a lot of fun to watch that and uh, so should be should be lots of fun so the next show happening February 14th of course uh, what better way to spend Valentine's Day uh, except it won't, it won't be Valentine's Day here. It'll be February 13th, but still, it should be, should be you know, a, a fun, fun show. Uh, new beginning in Nagata going down. 
Um, of course, this being the last show for the Bullet Club members, Carl Anderson and uh, Doc Gallows, and they are going to be going against GBH, which is Togi Makabe and Tomaki Anma, and they're getting their rematch for the IWGP Tag Team Titles. Um, going over some of the undercard matchups, uh, you have a six-man tag. Uh, you have the Bullet Club of Cody Hall and the Young Bucks going against Captain New Japan, Juice and Thunder Liger and Tiger Mask. You have the team of Ghetto and Sakuraba representing Chaos going against Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, Red Dragon. Uh, big eight-man tag team matchup of David Finley. Uh, Manabu Nakanishi, Ryusuke Taguchi, and Yuji Nagata going against Hiroshi Tenzan, Matt Seidel, Ricochet, and Satoshi Kojima. Uh, of course, Loris Ingernables will be there, and they'll be going against Jay White and Michael Elgin teaming up, I believe, for the first time. So that should be interesting to uh, to see how Elgin and Jay White tag up against Los Ingernables. Um, Bullet Club. More members are going to be in action. Bad Luck Fale, Tamatanga, and Yujihiro Takahashi going against the Briscoe Brothers and Toriyanu. Uh, another six-man tag going down. Representing Chaos, you have Okada, Ishii, and Yoshihashi going against Hiroki Goto, Juice Robinson, and uh, Katsuyori Shibata. And now getting to the title matches, there's three title matches. For the new beginning in Nagata, you have Kushida defending his IWGP junior heavyweight title against Bushi, representing Los Ingernables. And of course, like I mentioned, you have uh, Togi Makabe and, uh, and Hanma uh, defending the titles against uh, Doc Ellis and Carl Anderson on presumably their last show in New Japan before heading to the WWE. And the main event for the new beginning in Nagata, the match that a lot of people are talking about. Uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Kenny Omega for the vacant IWGP Intercontinental title after uh, New Japan vacated the title from Shinsuke Nakamura as he was also leaving for the WWE. Uh, so, Skits, any thoughts on uh, some of the matches on this show? Um, I'm pretty excited, you know, for all these shows. I'm going to be 100. I probably won't catch them all live, but I will definitely watch these so we can go over these matches. Um, one match that I want to ask you, because I heard you say Ricochet's name on the second show. Who's he facing? He is going to be in the big eight-man tag. It's going to be um, Ricochet and Matt Seidel, Hiroshi Tenzan, and Satoshi Kojima going against Yuji Nagata, uh, Taguchi, Manabu Nakanishi, and David Finley. So kind of like a a random mix eight-man tag. Yeah. Going on. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. I'm not a big fan of those matches. That's like the house show type of matches. Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, have you heard of a wrestler by the name of uh, Dragon Lee? Oh, yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, Mark, has been telling me big things about this kid. I believe he's, what, 20 years old? Yeah, I believe he's uh, 2021. And I heard he's a, he's he's a, the the kid's a killer from what I've heard. Um, I believe he was part of the last New Japan CMLL show. He was, and he put on um, he put on some great performances. If I were any of you listening to the show right now, I would go check out um, the New Japan CMLL uh, Fantastic Mania shows, specifically Day Six. Um, him, he, I mean, Dragon Lee is ridiculous. Um, I had heard a lot of things about him, but C like I said, CMLL and AAA are probably the two, I guess you could say big promotions that I don't really watch too much of. Um, it's a lot harder to kind of access these shows, I think to me, as opposed to, you know, some of the other, um, big promotions going on, but I am trying to get more into CMLL. And I think, like I said, Dragon Lee is going to be a big selling point of CMLL. Yeah, definitely. I'm, my boy Mark, he's uh, he basically 
put me on him and told me to check him out. So he actually even sent me a, a match uh, that uh, he had in CMLL. I, I found out that they have like a certain like a certain type of thing that they do out there in CML in CMLL. Like they have two out of three falls matches. Uh, they like it's pretty nuts out there. Like like the rules of wrestling is kind of different than how it is out here. Yeah, I believe so. I could be mistaken, but I think that's I think that is how it goes. Like I said, I I, I don't watch too much CMLL. A lot of what I do see from CMLO is, uh, you know, from the New Japan Fantastic Mania shows. But like I said, the the Dragon Lee versus, um, uh, what is it? Uh, I think it's uh, Kamatachi. That that was the match on day six um, from the New Japan CMLO shows that got rave reviews that people told me I had to check out. And it was also in contention for Wrestling Observer Newsletter's uh, Feud of the Year. And it was just, it was kind of like one of those feuds that was under the radar that if you weren't really paying attention to CMLL, you wouldn't know it was going down. So, um, so yeah, like I said, I would recommend that. Uh, a lot of New Japan shows coming up. So, like I said, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that uh, Kenny Omega-Tanahashi match. I think that could be a really, really good main event. And... I think for the first time ever, actually maybe the second time, Russell Kingdom 10 was maybe the first time ever since I started watching uh, New Japan a couple of years ago. I, I'm very, very confident that Kenny Omega is going to walk out the Intercontinental Champion. Oh, definitely. Do. Um, I, I believe it's definitely his time for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you have to. And honestly, it's 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 great for me to see because... When Kenny Omega first signed with New Japan, um, I, I, I wanted to see him get the star treatment. So, I mean, it was good to see him kind of start out in the juniors division. But now we're really finally, I think, going to see the the big push for uh, Kenny Omega as a big single star, kind of like what he was in DDT. So, I'm pumped. Definitely, definitely. Good. Um, can't wait. Yep, so that's it for, like I said, New Japan, guys. Any, If you want to check it out, newjapanworld.com. Lots of shows coming up, and uh, I know New Japan Cup's coming up next month as well, so we're going to stay on top of New Japan coverage as much as we can. Happy, folks. Uh, be sure to listen to it, because uh, we are the show that covers as much as we can. Uh, real quick, I have a couple of announcements couple book wrestlers that will be special guests here on Wrestling Heads Radio. February 11th at 11.30 East Coast time, regular time. Lucha Underground's own Jeff Cobb will be live here on Wrestling Heads Radio on February 15th. CZW champion Matt Tremont will be Live here on Wrestling Heads Radio, 11.30 East Coast time. Uh, be, be sure to book that. And February 22nd, SoCal wrestler Brody King will be live here on WH Radio, 11.30 East Coast uh, time. So be sure to book. Uh, um, be sure to put those in your calendar. Book those in your calendar and uh, listen as we bring some of the best talent in professional wrestling here on Wrestling Heads Radio. And I am right now working on a couple more big names. If I get them in February, February is going to be stacked, folks. Stacked with a lot of great wrestlers. And um, I know I, I asked the guys uh, here on Wrestling Heads, I asked Oscar, um, Jared, uh, Tom himself, and I even asked um, David, oh, like, give me your top five guys you would like to, uh, you know, have, have a special guest here on Wrestling Heads Radio. So, uh I got one. Matt Tremont was one of Jared's guys, and uh, so we got one. And um, Jeff Cobb, I just hit him up because I know he's, uh, you know, doing his thing at Lucha Underground right now, and uh, I feel like this is the right time because I feel like Jeff Cobb's going to be a big name that we'll be talking about later on this year. And Brody King's an uh, up-and-coming SoCal guy that uh, is definitely going uh, to – that's definitely been killing killing in uh, Southern California. So, um I'm waiting on Tom's top five because uh, 
See if I can do a top so far. Uh, I'm just I'm just waiting on cheeseburger. That's all I'm waiting on. Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger is such a no seller. <laughs> no, I, um, I, I wouldn't mind having cheeseburger, but I mean I'm I'm honestly I'm excited for Max Remont. Uh definitely he is Matt Tremont's so underrated and the reason he's underrated you know let's be honest is that he works for CCW and he does death matches you know because people see okay oh man Matt Tremont he's CCW world champ and he does death matches man this guy must be you know a a one-dimensional type wrestler and I think that is so so untrue I've seen Matt Tremont uh, live multiple times and the guy can do any type of match, he can work tag matches, he can work the death match as well. And you know what? I see, I, I, I'm honestly, I'm not a big death match type of person. I was never really into a lot of the CZW death matches or the IWA Mid South type of death matches, or even, uh, I mean, I watched a lot of the um, death matches back in Japan. Um, those kind of interested me a little bit more. Um, but th- there's a lot of deathmatch wrestlers that tell a good story when doing death matches, and I think Matt Tremont uh, is, is, is one of them. And I think Matt Tremont should be booked way more than he is. I think Matt Tremont should be booked in so many different promotions. This guy should be um, on every promotion's radar. We just had a match with Chris Hero at, at uh, the last Beyond show. Speaking about Beyond Wrestling, Ethan Page gets booked for the next Beyond show. Yeah, I'm excited about that one. Um, I think he can. I think he can fit in well with Beyond Wrestling. I think there's a good, uh, a good, you know, amount of talent in Beyond that he could work with. And it's a lot of talent that he may not be able to work with. You know, you look at the names like uh, JT Dunn, David Starr maybe tag up with somebody going against uh, the hit squad, uh, whoever. But I know uh, I know, Mr. Matthew Grant is probably definitely excited for this one as well. You know, fellow, uh, fellow Canadian uh, making his way to uh, the Northeast. Yeah, it's always great to see somebody branching out. Uh, there's no secret. Ethan Page has been talked about in the Beyond Wrestling limelight for as long as he has, and finally getting that opportunity to do so. So... Very cool. February the 28th. Be there, folks. So, CZ does. I hate to bring bring the vibe of the show down, but, man, I miss Josh Alexander. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Monster Mafia will be running rough shot across the independent scene, if so. Speaking of um, Beyond Wrestling, um, they asked, uh, who would you like to see, you know, Page wrestle. You guys, who you guys would like to see him wrestle uh, at a uh, Beyond? I know personally, I'd like to see him work Donovan Dijak, but obviously he's already been announced for a match, so that is what it is. Um, I know people were requesting David Starr, but he's not going to be around, so I, I really don't know. Um, I want to see him, him and Kimberly. I'd be all right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see him going against any female talent, um, especially in his debut. Maybe they could kind of build up to something. Is uh, is Chris Dickinson booked for a match on that Beyond show? He's not going to be around, hence the reason why they did the they both in the UK Talhan uh, Dijak match. That's right. That's He's right. In the UK, uh, David Starr's in the UK. That is right. Um, I mean, honestly, if I had to, I like I said, I don't know who's who's booked for the show, but I think JT Dunn could be a good choice if he's not booked. Um, Jonathan Gresham, I think, could be another top choice as well. How about Chris Hero? That could be another good choice as well. Um, I want to see something we haven't seen before, and Paige and Hero we just seen recently in Evolve, so I'm kind of against it. We'll 
we'll see what uh, Dion decides. So. Um, NXT tonight, I know you guys didn't catch it, but I just want to go over NXT. Um, tonight, uh, Carmella, uh, she faced Emma. Pretty sloppy match. You know, I, I found out something today that I did not know about. Um, so I didn't know that, I didn't know that, um, our, um, that Carmella's dad used to be a wrestler. I don't know. Did you guys know that? I didn't know that. Uh, I guess they had, like, you know how Michael Cole has his little interviews with a wrestler each week or whatnot? Um, so Tom Phillips had an interview with her talking about her match with Bailey, and she mentioned how her dad used to, you know, wrestle in the WWE back in the 80s. But he played more of, like, the jobber role. I don't know what he did back in the days or whatnot, but uh, her father used to uh, wrestle uh which was quite interesting to me because, like, a girl like Carmella, you see her as, like, a girl that just, that's, that's just, you know, just got in the business, you know. So she does have that family background. But um, her, the match with Carmella and Emma was pretty sloppy because we all know Carmella's not really uh, uh, experienced like uh, Emma is. Uh, she got the victory. Also tonight... Uh, we had Big Cass and um, Enzo Amore. They cut another promo, kind of crying a little bit, but they still uh, job two uh, jobbers uh, tonight. But the highlight of, this, of uh, tonight's NXT, besides Santana Garrett making her uh, NXT debut against Asuka, it was a cool little match, you know, for uh, – her to showcase herself in NXT, it made it seem like she had some offense a little bit, but then, of course, you know, Asuka came up with the victory. Um, also, tonight, Finn Balor and Apollo Crews had their rematch, and uh, it was a pure wrestling match in the beginning. You know, a lot of uh, holds or why not, or, or like uh, what not. Uh, like, Finn Balor basically had Apollo Crews down to the ground. Uh, most of the match, but uh, I really uh, think folks should check out that match with Finn Balor and, uh, and uh, Cruz. It looks like Finn Balor has new uh, wrestling gear, I guess, on his uh, trucks. It says Finn, Finn, Finn. And I think on one of his uh, knee pads it says Finn, Finn. So, but anyways, uh, folks, check out NXT. Uh, there's been no uh, talks of uh, any uh, matches been announced for the takeover yet, but uh, check it out, folks. But yeah, I don't know if uh if Matt, if you had any uh updates on what's going on up there in the uh, in the Great White North up there in Canada, if there's any shows coming up, any announcements I know you mentioned earlier, uh of course Smash doing more cross promotion after their Smash versus CZW now teaming up with Chikara and uh I really haven't gotten your thoughts on that yet. What do you think of that? Smash Wrestling teaming up with Chikara to do a big show for Smash Wrestling. You know, I wasn't quite sure what to think of it at first. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Chikara. I respect what they do. You know, they've been around for a long time. They got a great following. They got a great fan base. But it's just not my cup of tea now when they said, or when I found out. And this was, I'll be honest, this was a while back before it was announced, but when I found out that Smash Wrestling was going to be working with uh, with Chikara, I was really excited. It's another opportunity for Smash Wrestling to get some more exposure, uh, some more exposure to, to some new talent as well, to the Smash Wrestling product. Uh, I think it's all around a great thing, and this isn't their only partnership that they're going to be announcing over the next little while either. So uh, it seems like Smash Wrestling and partnerships are just going to be a trending thing over the next little while because they've really got some big things planned. Um, just a lot of big things planned in general for the Canadian independent wrestling scene. Alpha One Wrestling doing some great things. Actually, they got a show in a couple weeks, uh, February the 21st, Big Year 7. Uh, Smash Wrestling got a show the day before, February the 20th, the Tag Team Tournament, which is going to be exciting. So, 
Uh, Destiny World Wrestling just had a great show this past weekend, their first TV taping. So it's like everything right now in professional wrestling is looking really good, looking really bright uh, for independent wrestling. Now, Destiny Wrestling, you said it's a TV taping. I'm imagining it's only going to be broadcasted up in Canada. Actually, I, from what I've heard, uh, I think the Destiny brand is going to make that available to everybody. So stay tuned on an announcement from that. Uh, I actually just talked to George last week on here on the Elite Podcast Network for WWP, and he was talking about an announcement being made in the next few weeks about you know how people can see it outside of the Ontario area. So uh, that is definitely in the works, and I'm looking si- uh, I'm looking forward to you know and actually being out there for you guys to check out. Yep, definitely. And um, whoever that guy is that's on commentary, he probably sucks. Yeah, yeah, that jobber. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, can't bury each other. You can bury other people. He knows Not I'm each- joking with him. I want to see his reaction and see what he's going to say. Hey, he's a jobber. He doesn't get butt hurt like some others. Big Papa Pump, holla if you hear me. No simpy, no simpy. Hey man, but uh, um, sometimes obvious... you gotta be ruthless, man. Sometimes you gotta be ruthless. Oscar, if you weren't at the gym so much, we wouldn't be as ruthless, bro. <laughs> I and mean, you should see his Snapchats yeah. at the gym. That's all to say. But uh, obviously, there's there's so much going on. You know, and, and, you know, we're approaching WrestleMania season and there's going to be so many shows across WrestleMania weekend. I can remember last year there were so many shows, you know, besides WrestleMania, you know, you had NXT, you had uh, Ring of Honor, you had uh, a couple of WWN live shows, Kaiju Big Battle, um, so many shows going on. But it, even in between then, there's so much happening. Of course, PWG going on uh, next week. And I got to uh, put over um, another promotion, a new promotion that's uh, over here in uh, SoCal. That's uh, It's called PCW. Uh, and they're going to have King King part of their show. Timothy Thatcher is going to be part of their show. Scorpio Sky, Jeff Cobb. Uh, trying to think of some more names, some more familiar names. Willie Mack. So uh, I know... We all know AWS is uh, kind of taking a break. We have a new promotion stepping their game out here. And uh, basically, we, we're going to have something new to watch also. So um, uh, looking forward to seeing uh, King, uh, King uh, live uh, here in SoCal. I believe it's going to be the first time I see him wrestle. I may have seen him at TNA, uh, uh, TNA's uh, Battle for Glory. The year AJ Styles face uh, Bully Ray, maybe. I don't know. But, you, you, uh, wait a minute! You're actually giving a few minutes to TNA on your show. Has hell frozen over? This is the second week we talk about TNA. I don't know where you've been. Hey, that doesn't mean anything. You giving any sort of time to TNA. Anytime we have a conversation about TNA outside of the show, it's like, ah, oh, no, I don't even care about it. No, last week we talked about TNA. I don't think you're on the show, but anyways, um, speaking of TNA, my boy uh, Trevor Lee is their new X Division champ. I will have to watch it just because Trevor Lee won the title. And uh, yeah, shout out to Trevor Lee, that dude. Him and Zach Sabre Jr. will kill it next week. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You know, it's as as much as we do rip on TNA and whatever. I've been hearing some oh, oh, pretty okay to good things about uh, TNA ever since they switched to Pop TV. It seems like they really are taking the initiative to make their product getting back to a serious manner. Um, can can so, I t- take over from here for a second? Because, you know what, I've had this thing about TNA over the past couple of weeks, and even a little bit before that, like even before the transition to Pop TV, the product wasn't necessarily as bad as everybody says it is. It's because it has the TNA stigma behind it that nobody's going to take a chance on it. It's because TNA has given up so many chances to their fans over the years that a lot of people are done with the product. And I get it, rightfully so, but... 
you can't talk shit about the product if you don't watch the product. So for those people out there that talk shit about TNA that don't consistently watch the product to know what you're talking about, sit in the corner. That is all. Wow, look who's checking up for TNA. <laughs> hey, man. You know, when they have a consistently good product, that's that's what I got to do. And that's what it's been over the past little while, man. They're actually putting time and effort into their product, into their creative, unlike a WWE product. Me so. and TNA, we can agree to disagree with some things that they got going on. Honestly, like I said, for me with TNA, I, I, I won't watch it as much as I'll watch other products, you know. Even even international products, I will take more time to invest in than TNA. Just because TNA over the years has just... Any time there's some sort of excitement or something happening, they do something to just mess it up. They do something to just lose my interest. And like I said, it's... Like, WWE has done that plenty of times, but WWE is also much more accessible, and it's also the number one wrestling product in the world. So I think there's much of a difference, you know? We complain about WWE all the time, but just because it's so readily available, I don't think a lot of us are going to stop watching it. But it's just, TNA had so many chances with fans both as a product standpoint as and a personnel standpoint, you know, how many times over the last years TNA just embarrassed themselves in the PR aspect and the public relations aspect, you know, you know, Dixie Carter it has just Im- it been embarrassing so much. And especially, you know, not just her, you know, Eric Young, uh, Josh Matthews, you know, people that are supposed to be representing your company going on Twitter and just doing these things that embarrass your company as a whole. Um, My thing is with TNA, yeah, the management side of things is absolutely awful. Like this whole Awesome Kong and Rebby Sky incident that just happened and them putting that out there and the AJ Styles thing just before the Royal Rumble and all the PR stuff that TNA has done. Yeah, I'm totally with you, man. The management side of TNA just is awful and represents the talent side of tna which is terrible because there's a lot of talented individuals on the tna roster that because of the management side don't get the just due that they deserve so i mean that's how it that's how it's always been though tna has always been that the talent has been there but tna has just never capitalized on it but you know what like i said it's great to see trevor lee as x division champion you know right right then and there that makes me more interested in the product right there. A young given, upstart. This is like them you know, getting rid of TJ Perkins is another ball drop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the way that it happened, too. I don't know if you guys have read Meltzer's story or had a chance to read Meltzer's story on that, but that was just disgusting the way that went down. You guys, you guys hear about that yet? Because if not, I'll throw it out there. I it. haven't, so go uh, so go for it. I'm very intrigued. I so kind of read it, but I can read all the way into it. So Melter, I'll put this out there really quickly. TJ Perkins, who was manic, did an interview with Main Event Radio, not trying to plug any other shows, but it is what it is, talking about his departure from the company. He said that his contract had come up for a renewal for an option year, and TNA not, not, chose not to pick up the option. He got a one-sentence email telling him that, which is pretty cool considering he's been with the company for five years. He had a brief Twitter issue with Josh Matthews last year. He had unmasked before Bound for Glory and asked John Gaborik what the direction would be. Gaborik's decision was for him to put the mask back on. He had su- he said he had suggested the build to that by doing a TV storyline with the idea fans would want him to put the b- mask back on as opposed to just doing it with no explanation. Of course, that was Nick's. The- they suggested he portray someone with a personality disorder. He said he wasn't comfortable doing that gimmick because he had a member of his family with that problem in real life. So they didn't have him do it. So then on television in his match... Josh Matthews started talking about him having a personality disorder. So he went on social media and said he didn't have a personality disorder and wasn't comfortable with it being portrayed that he did. Matthews then told the creative team he was mad, thinking that Perkins was making him look bad and undercutting him as an announcer since he was the person who said it on television. He said Matthews got too prideful and took the tweet too personally. So that's why they released him, because of that? That is pretty much the reasoning that was given, yes. Because of the whole mask situation? Because he 
went and buried Josh Matthews, according to Josh Matthews on Twitter. And apparently Josh Matthews is more of a liability than TJ is, so whatever. Josh Matthews is a piece of shit. Josh Matthews buried fucking WWE. <laughs> Not only that, man. Yo, Josh Matthews has to be by far one of the worst professional wrestling announcers in the history of the business. I'm not talking about just now, but he's Mike Adamly bad, man. He makes things seem like they're so important when they're the stupidest fucking thing. And this guy, oh my god, like, there's so many you know things I, I say. Josh Matthews is full of shit because he buried the WWE when they say some more Joe's name. Like, oh, you guys know who that is? Not really that, man. It's just like, Oh, like, there's so many things I want to say, and Pope's not any better, man. Him saying, yo, daddy, every single fucking sentence, it's like, man, like, shut the fuck up. Like, TNA has the worst announced team in the history of wrestling right now. It I'm is not a big awful. fan of uh, their commentary team at all. No. Yeah, and I will say, what's funny is I will say, as bad as, listen, Michael Cole, Byron Saxon, and JBL, they're all bad, but... They can be okay to good if it wasn't for Vince yelling in their ear. I doubt that TNA has the type of restrictions that WWE has. So that's how you know I think Josh Matthews is bad. And when it comes to somebody like, I'll say like Matt Stryker, like Matt Stryker can be bad at times. For the most part, he's good. Um, You know, if he kind of stays on course and doesn't kind of like go off on a tangent. And, you know, he can... He can sometimes like go off on like a WWE tangent or something, but he also doesn't just completely shit on them. Yeah. Like I said, this is the, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the uh, just kind of random, uh, random shoot that we're doing right now. Um, you know, like I said, you, you know, if you, if you, if if anybody listening, if you guys have any opinions on. Anything we're going on, even though this is a tape show, you know, every Monday night we go live 1130 Eastern, 830 Pacific. Um, and this that's the time to get your voices heard or always tweet us at Wrestling Heads. Let us know what you're thinking of going what's going on in any promotion in professional wrestling and whether you agree or disagree with our opinions or uh, whatever matter we're discussing. We want to hear Leave what you got. Leave a comment on YouTube. Leave a comment down at the bottom. All I got to say is fuck Josh Matthews, fuck the Pope, fuck TNA's commentary team, fuck TNA's PR team, fuck everything TNA that is in their roster. That is all, folks. All I got to say, let me tell you what pokes me. Well, I'm not too big on what TNA's roster right now. It's just for shooting and shit. I'm not a big fan of their money back together. Why? It's 2016. I feel like Bobby Roode should be doing his own singles thing. I know they probably don't have nothing for him right now, but he's a singles guy. He he could be in the in the scene for the title, or maybe the King of the Mountain title or something. He doesn't need to be a tag team guy. They need to if they want a, a tag team, how about they build a tag team division? You know, figure something out. You know, uh, I'm gonna say this in the most respectful way I can, Skits. You gotta watch the product to, to have an opinion, man. The tag team division I told you. I, I I watched last week, so But one week doesn't cut it, man. You you gotta watch Still, the product. I think he doesn't need it's fucking Bobby Roode. Why is he in a tag team division twenty sixteen? Hold on, hold on. You just said if he's gonna be in the tag team division to build up the tag team division, there's at least five but, tag teams I can think of in T N A right now. You don't need you honestly you don't need beer money as a tag team. What but else are you going to do with fucking James Storm? Are you going to have him build another group and that go to fucking waste? I don't know what they're going to do with James Storm. Because James know. Storm is too bitter to, or too bitter, to, too stupid, I should say, to go to fucking NXT. He wants to stick in TNA because he's too worried about money instead of actually doing something with his career. I just think Bobby Roode is more of a singles guy now. He, hey, man, he I, I'm it. totally with you, man. Like, if there's anybody who's a big Bobby Roode fan, it's me. I've loved Bobby Roode for years. We go back to the fucking Mrs. Banks gimmick when he was fucking uh, doing uh, the... Oh, fuck, 
I can't even think of the the gimmick that he was doing. Yeah, the fuck. What was the fucking corporation he had going? I, I can't even remember. The point is, way back in two thousand seven, two thousand eight area. It's when I was a fan of Bobby Roode, man. And even before that, the Team Canada days. We can sit here and talk about Bobby Roode forever and how great he is. The fact that TNA isn't taking advantage of that sucks. I th- I think it just has to do with James Storm coming back, man. They had nothing. And I watched that whole Bears uh, money segment when they're like taking sh- like like they were like in the ring and they had like, like all the beer in the ring or whatnot, and they were like, "I'm sorry for hitting you uh, with the bottle," and they drink with that, like. What is this? this is a joke? It's kind of like a joke to me at the same time. Like, you you know, like, how can I take Bobby Roode serious or James Stone serious now when they're kind of like a comedy slash... But that's, tag- but that's them. Like, as a tag team, that's the way they are. It doesn't necessarily mean they get taken less seriously as a tag team, in my opinion. It's just the way their schlick is. It's the way they go about it. I, I get it from a professional wrestling fan ex- uh, perspective. You know, it's not necessarily the greatest thing you want to see these two do, and you want to see them cutting serious promos and being more motivated as a tag team. But you're going to get these comedy segments where, you know, they drink. What am I watching? Talk shit. Uh, go to this and our truth. Ah, come on! Don't don't downgrade Rude and Storm by co- comparing them to those two bums. Please don't do that. Whoa, whoa! Don't be calling our truth a bum. Let's can't call our truth a bum. Just because he's had some funny segments over the past little while does not make it that he's a bum. All the reason why I said that because Bobby Rude, we seen he's the best on the mic when it comes to TNA as a heel, straight straight up. I, you're right. I mean, you're right. Bobby Roode was at his best when he was the longest reigning TNA why World is, Heavightweight Champion. He, I, I don't even want to start with why is Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy like your main like stories right now? Like, come on, is this 2002? Um, with Matt Hardy, I mean, I'm not trying to defend it or anything, but it's like. You know, it's something different in the sense of they're trying to have the baby face, which is EC3 at this moment, chase the heel, which is Matt Hardy. And in the end, when a baby face chases a heel, you usually get a better story than if it's the other way around. For a while, people were kind of on the fence of cheering Matt Hardy, and people were starting to cheer EC3. So they had to do something in the sense of doing a double turn and uh, incorporating Tyrus in it wasn't necessarily the greatest thing to do, but... At least they got EC3 as a babyface, and at least they have something somewhat planned going forward. Uh, I know Galloway has the TNA World Heavyweight title briefcase as well, so I'm sure that's going to be coming into play. I don't think Hardy's champion for long. He's just there to be champion. It was probably something to help out with his signing bonus as well. I don't know, man. I'm just not a big fan of Matt Hardy as a fucking champion. as my center of attention if I'm watching a product. That's just me. I get it. I get it, and I'm not and trying to I, defend TNA in any aspect. I don't know, Tom. What are your opinions on this? Because you've been kind of silent throughout this whole conversation. I don't know. Like, for them to take the belt off of EC3, like, I can understand why they did it, because they wanted to face turn EC3 and he'll turn Matt Hardy. I can understand. You know, they could have did it a whole different way. I'm sorry to cut you off. They, you know, yeah, Mike Bennett, they just signed him, right? What are they doing hell? Really nothing. How, how about you have Mike Bennett go hill and then you have EC3 go face? They had that little uh, uh segment in, in the back. You see, you can't just hot shot Mike Bennett to the title, man. That's that's jumping the gun way can. too much. Yes, you can. I disagree completely. I think if you hot shot him right to the title, he has nowhere to go going forward. You go right to the top at your beating in the company. You know, there's no, no really... Uh, future for you with the company. You got to build to that, man. PNA needs the help right now with anybody right now. Look, look at EC3. Like... Look how long they took with EC3's build to the World Heavyweight Championship. He was undefeated for how long before he actually became a champion? That was a little too long to me, if you ask me. I think I honestly think anything TNA, you're just gonna have a negative opinion about, in my opinion. Um, I'm being honest. What do you want me to say? I don't know, man. That's I just said. I, I just said EC three should have been champ a long time ago. It shouldn't have been this long. Hey, man. Uh, I just said know... from the positive of TNA. It was actually about EC three. I mean, whatever. It, it is what it is. You're gonna have your opinion. And I'm gonna have mine. 
like I said, it's at least I'll say that, like I said, TNA, it, it seems like they're on a semi positive uh, road ever since they got on Pop TV. And like I said, if they could stay away from, uh, you know, like Matt, you mentioned, if they could just stay away from the PR bullshit. And I, like I said, I, I, I still cannot understand how wrestlers and uh and different talent can still not even just t- this isn't even just tna but this goes for any wrestler mm-hmm. if you're in wwe all the way down to the independents how you can go on twitter and still say some like you know some people say some dumb stuff but then there's a line and then people just they make themselves look like complete morons and I still, like I said, I still see it from from the top to to lower level indie guys. It's it's all across the board. Yeah, my favorite thing actually was Matt Hardy on Twitter today, uh, trying to fucking talk shit to the New Day and basically be like, "Oh, uh, Hardy's would come back to WWE and whoop the New Day's ass." And Biggie comes all along the lines of like, "Yeah, you're trying to put yourself over in a cross promotion that's never gonna happen." See, but I thought that was Matt Hardy's gimmick was to just be like a complete asshole on Twitter. Like that ever since he turned heel. Like I thought that's like his gimmick. Honestly, but you you, you gotta take it you you were just saying like there's only an extent you can take it to, man. Like when he's sitting there saying, Oh, I'm the best world champion in wrestling net right now and tagging Roman Reigns and tagging fucking Okada and tagging fucking Jay Lethal and whatnot and it's like, come on, man, stop. You're making yourself look pathetic right now. I don't, I'm sorry to switch subjects, but I definitely feel what you're saying. Matt Hardy, I don't even want to get into it because you're going to think I'm saying bad things. Hey, it's it's I, Matt Hardy. He's he's Matt Hardy at the end of the day, so I, I could give a fuck I, less. I just want to jump real quick into a Rev Pro wrestling. Uh, I'm kind of happy you brought that up because I just want to put over the fact that I got the chance to watch that Marty Skrull and Will Ospreay match that everybody's going fucking retarded about. Yeah, I can understand why everybody's going the way they are about it. That match was insane. The aerial assassin and the villain tore it up, and I highly recommend checking that out if you haven't already. Oh, yeah, people. I had to beg this bastard to fucking watch it. Uh, and he finally got it. Uh, but, yeah, Rap Pro definitely doing big things. Uh, their next show, I believe it's February... Seventh, February seventh, the next show. Marty Scroll will be going one on one with Timothy Thatcher, and these two have already faced off at PWG, and I believe they faced off in Vegas too. So uh, that should be good. Another one, Pete Dunne. I believe he's like their uh, cruiserweight champ. I don't know exactly what the name of the title, but it's, it's basically the cruiserweight title. I guess Sanjay Dutt. That's going down. Pete, Pete does look you uh, pretty good for uh, his size. Um, Will Ospreay versus Zack Sabre Jr. non-title um, match. That's going to be ridiculous. Uh, also, returning in April at Epic Enforcer. Excuse me, Epic Encounter. Roger Strong returns to Rev Pro. Uh, that should be uh, dope. Not sure who they're going to have uh, him face. But also, um, February 17th, you'll have Timothy Thatcher against Zack Sabre Jr. happening too uh, in Rev Pro. And also at at Epic Encounter, Ricochet returns. Like these names that they name here just gets ridiculous. Uh, Flash Morgan Webster, one of the best. In the UK, in my opinion, going against James Castle, uh, Donovan Dijak. He's going to be making. I'm not sure if it's his debut. I want to say this is his debut in Rev Pro. So uh, we have a look at Rev Pro making big moves. I I had tweeted the other day. I promised myself I would not miss any Rev Pro show this year. Yeah, Rev Pro, uh, definitely doing some great things. Um, 
And, you know, because of Rev Pro on demand and progress on demand, you know, a lot of these uh, UK and European based promotions are making it really easy to just kind of uh, catch up on their shows. And even if, you know, you don't want to pay for a subscription based, you know, you can get the matches uh, just at, at regular price if you just want to see the match. But uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that. All these shows are freaking stacked from progress uh, to Rev Pro to uh, ICW to um, Southside. So many great uh, UK promotions. And it's like I said, it's we, we, we see the kind of global exchange of talent um, that's really going on from, you know, Mexico to North America to the UK, um, Australia, even we're seeing a lot of Australian talent uh, kind of make its way to the WWE and even some independent promotions as well. And of course, Japan. So, I mean, like I said, I'm really enjoying it. I, I, I find the more diverse a show is as far as its talent goes, the better it's going to be because you can't have all the guys looking the same and, you know, uh, being the same type of person. So I love seeing just a good mix of, uh, of cultures kind of clashing. It's always fun to see. And uh, like I said, Rev Pro, it's, it's kind of like the, the, the the big super indie over in the uk because they do also get the uh new japan talents as well so um it's great it's great and it's great finding out about uh about new stars and new talents and what these guys can do all right put over one of the brands that i'm a part of the indie power rankings is a big reason why i get to see as many of the new talents as i get to so I mean, if you guys haven't checked out that already, the Indie Power Rankings here on the Elite Podcast Network, that is something to check out because every single week you get exposed to at least 15 new talents. So uh, that is, you know, actually I'd say 25 new talents if you consider the tag teams two people, which they are. So uh, 25 new talents with the tag team top five and the top ten every single week. So, I mean, that's something to check out. And I'm not going to lie. Me, myself, I've been on this whole... uh... UK uh, wrestling uh, thing, you know, I've been in love with the UK wrestling lately, so, uh, you know, you want to know who's a uh, guy you need to check out, just ask your boy Skits, but we're actually coming to an end here on the show, um, follow us on Twitter at Wrestling Heads, we are on Twitter at Wrestling Heads, um, I'm on Twitter at WH Skits, that is Twitter, ProWrestlingTees.com backslash Wrestling Heads. Go copy the t-shirt. Uh, YouTube.com backslash Wrestling Heads. Do us a favor. Do me a favor. If if you don't follow me, I want you to follow this Twitter because this, this Twitter that I'm about to name needs followers. Straight up. Follow Elite Podcast Net. Follow the Twitter. And, um, yeah. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at to tweet me. That is my personal account. My Periscope is the exact same thing. Um, follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to follow you back. I'll be sure to check out your your Periscopes. I really don't Periscope, but uh, as skits as skits and Matt knows, uh, I like to just kind of hop on people's Periscopes and uh, get into the conversation. So. Uh, follow me on there. I'll be trying posting more on Twitter. I do a lot more retweets than posting, but uh, hopefully going to be catching some of these New Japan shows as they happen in the early mornings. So if you're interested in following along with that, but still need to catch up on independent wrestling. So much to so much to watch. So little time, but I will get there eventually. So keep a lookout for that. Like I said, follow me on there and. Uh, I'll be sure to uh, keep up with whatever you're tweeting as well. And uh, make sure you guys are going around. And uh, as we mentioned, so much so much great uh, wrestling out there that you guys can support. Uh, SmartMarkVideo.com, great place to start for companies like Alpha One Wrestling, uh, Chikara, uh, companies like that. HighSpots.com has your hookup for uh, PWG. Uh, and, of course, all the on-demand services. Uh, if you're in the UK, if you're looking for UK wrestling, of course, Progress On Demand, ICW On Demand, Rev Pro On Demand, 
uh, are three of the top notch ones. If you're looking for the Canadian based one, Smash Wrestling has it. Smash on demand, seven forty nine a month. I know Matt usually puts that over, but uh, I will double it every single time. Uh, I'm, you know, very excited for Smash versus CZW. Can't wait to check that out. And then Smash versus Shakara, I'm definitely very intrigued by. And uh, I think you guys should be too. And of course, uh, beyond on beyond demand, YouTube.com backslash beyond demand. Um, I heard there's a good JT Dunn interview on there as well. Um, what else am I missing? I know I'm probably missing something. AAW On Demand, AAW Archives. Um, so much great stuff, people. Just make sure you guys, whatever wrestling you like, support it to the fullest. You know, if, you, if you're only into WWE, you know what? Go buy an AJ Styles t-shirt. But that's all I can say. And, and uh, Kevin Owens. Yeah. What so, about the greatest man who ever lived, Austin Aries? Oh, I thought you were going to say Bo Dallas. But uh, well, if we get <laughs> oh, some no, Bo but... Rider merchandise on the WWE shop, I'll buy that shit. Yeah, but before I let you get to your plugs, Matt, I found it was hilarious that a hip hop magazine actually declared Bo Dallas the winner in a scripted rap battle against Flo Rida. That is how garbage Flo Rida is. Please, WWE, never book him again on your show. And if you do, have Kevin Owens powerbomb him off the stage like he did to Machine Gun Kelly and end him just like he did Machine Gun Kelly. But, um, I want to thank, uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, I know Matt, you've been tweeting out the uh, the big amount of listens we've been getting. You know, people. Uh, what helps us out is following us on social medias. Uh, iTunes helps us out a lot. I know. You know, subscribing on there, leaving uh, a review, leaving a, a rate review, and uh, also on Stitcher as well. Uh, Stitcher's a great way to just give us a, you know, it's it's free 100%, but it helps us out and makes us look good. So support the podcast network. So many different platforms to do so. I, I definitely agree. So, uh, you know, you got Eyes on the Ring, you got Wrestling Heads Radio, the Indie Power Rankings reveal whether it be the top five or the top ten every single week. Let's talk by the Cooler Wrestling with myself. Um, there's so many great shows here on the Elite Podcast Network that, uh, you know, you guys are definitely want to going to check out. So at Elite Podcast Net on Twitter for all of that. Um, YouTube.com slash Weekly Wrestling Podcast. We just posted three interviews this past weekend with Moose, Deanna Perrazzo, and Scott Demore from Destiny World Wrestling. So check those ones out. Uh, Smash vs. CCW actually just got posted recently on Smash On Demand and CCW Studios, so recommend checking that show out. It is an amazing event. Actually, I believe both uh, CCW Studios and Smash On Demand do a free trial gimmick, so uh, if you're new register on there, you can get a free, I think it's free two weeks with Smash On Demand and a free month with CCW Studios, so... Uh, check that out for yourself on demand.smash-wrestling.com or czwstudios.com. Um, let's see here. At Weekly W Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, facebook.com slash weekly wrestling podcast. You can follow me on my personal Twitter at Matthew Grant. First A is a four. You could contact me for bookings if you're looking for a ring announcer, uh, you know, referee, or a commentator at Matthew Grant at hotmail.ca or my Twitter, my Facebook, whatever the case may be. I'm always on all forms of social media, so you can hit me up on there. Check out WWP episode 4 when it's available, and it should be available by the time this show's available. So, uh, yeah, just support the Elite Podcast Network directly, man. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WWP slash WrestlingHead slash Indie Power. You know, if you guys can support us, pick up a t-shirt or two off of there. Then, you know, that's, that's all I can ask for at the end of the day, man. Just keep supporting uh, before we go off, I got one thing to say. Man, what a time. Be alive. God damn it, I hate you, skits. I got one more thing to say, too. Holla, if you hear me. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Join in on the craziness. Shout this out to Monday. Big Papa Pump. If your engine was breaking down, 
Would you take it to a mechanic 15 years later? So if your knee is hurting, why wait years to fix it? Because the earlier you seek out help, the more options you have. At the Cedars-Sinai Orthopedic Center, our minimally invasive techniques allow many of our patients to be back up on their feet and go home within 24 hours. So trust the number one hospital in L.A. for joint replacements. Call 1-800-CEDARS-1 or visit our website.